Good day. We are on Pearls of Wisdom again. And what a blessing it is for me to be able to share God's word. I truly hope that you are getting some nuggets and learning something as we share from the word of God. These are not pearls of wisdom from me, Pearl, but these are pearls of wisdom from God's word. There is nothing better than God's word. And we thank God for God's word as we dig deep to get the nuggets of his word. And we have been talking all along around blessings, trying to uh, get God's true meaning and original meaning on what does it really mean to be blessed. We've been also looking at the Beatitudes, remembering that blessings is a choice. It's a lifestyle choice. We've dealt with the Beatitudes from Matthew, starting with Matthew 5, 3, where we've talked about blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We've discussed Matthew 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What does it really mean to mourn? And today we are looking at Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Oh my goodness, what a promise. A promise to inherit the earth. And this promise is based on our ability to walk in meekness. And uh, I noticed also that there is a corresponding scripture in Psalm 37, 11, and it also gives a similar um, scripture, similar word. It says, the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. So what, what does it mean, beloveds, when we talk about the meek and the blessings? Let's look maybe at the original word, do a bit of an etymology of the word. Word etymology means a study, a proper study of the word. And the Bible also admonishes us and encourages us to study and show ourselves approved. So let's show ourselves approved by embarking on a study of the word meek. Uh, If you look in the Greek original meaning, prius is directly translated to mean humility towards God and others. So when we're talking about meekness, it again has an aspect around humility towards God and others. Um, when we're talking about meekness, we're talking about a, a, a certain mildness and gentleness of spirit. What I do want to make clear, though, because sometimes we misinterpret our understanding of the word meek. You know, we think it means to be just timid and shy and, you know, not even opening up your mouth. And I would like to say that contrary to popular belief, being meek does not mean that you become everybody's doormat. In fact, it rather suggests that you are a person who is filled with power. The difference is that the power in you is a controlled power, it's a disciplined power, and it's an orderly power. It's a submitted uh, and surrendered power. Um, So that's the difference. It's not that you're powerless. It's that you have a power that is submitted and surrendered. Now, whenever I think of the word meek, I often refer to an example I once read about, which actually used a horse. As, as an example. And in this example, um, the, the example invited one to imagine a very, very powerful horse, which was about to go on a race. And it said that if that horse was to be released without a rider, now imagine a very powerful horse, and it doesn't have a rider, and it doesn't have any reins in its mouth um, that enables it to be controlled. So if we were to release that horse, that very powerful horse, without any reins, without a rider, that horse would just go on a wild rampage and it would never finish its race and it would never reach its destination. So what would make that horse meek and victorious is having reins in its mouth and having a rider who holds the reins to rein in its power to ensure that it does not go off course. So it's the rider who holds the reins and ensures that the horse stays on course. It is the rider and the reins that ensure that the horse travel at the right speed so that the horse can finish its course and not run out of breath. A meek horse, therefore, would not be a powerless horse or a useless horse or a timid horse uh, or a fearful horse. It is a horse that wields an enormous amount of power, 
But that power is firmly under the control of the rider who is holding the reins. Now, beloveds, if we apply this example in our own lives, Jesus must certainly be the rider and the Holy Spirit must be our reins, always guiding and directing us where to go. The Holy Spirit in us should produce fruit to ensure that we walk in meekness, in gentleness and in love. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. This week, may we be sure to allow Jesus to be our rider. May we take our identity and our examples from him. And may precious Holy Spirit be the reins that will lead and guide us and direct us every day to ensure that we stay on our course and we finish our race. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Be blessed.